introduce myself to you. So my name is Donna Dean and I am an Ask Ambassador. So that basically means that I am um, an apprenticeship, uh, sorry, an apprenticeship ambassador. Um, and our job is to go around schools, colleges, places of education, and we deliver apprenticeship support and knowledge to students, to tutors, teachers, um, to parents and carers as well. So anybody that needs this information, that is um, who we actually present to. Um, normally, we actually come into schools and colleges. Uh, I have met some of your students, your young people. Um, I did cover the careers fair at the college um, a number of weeks ago, and I have to say, um, I was kept very, very busy during the whole session. Um, but as you were just told as well, if you've got any questions, hopefully I'll cover most of it during the presentation, but anything that I can uh, hopefully answer, I will try and answer tonight for you. Um, so I'm very, uh, I'm hopefully going to be able to share my screen with you all now. Um, and hopefully you will all be able to see that. If I can just move this out of the way. Yes, we can. Thank you, Donna. OK, can you see this? Can you see that small black screen or is that just in my screen? Everything looks fine to me, Donna. OK, thank you. Um, so it is National Apprenticeship Week this week. Um, we have been delivering lots and lots of information. It doesn't just mean that apprenticeships are spoken about in one week. Um, it does actually mean that they are just very much focused this week. Um, so please go and actually research your social media sites. Um, go and have a look around at all those free sessions that are available to you. Um, you'll find that there's lots of employers getting online this week to actually discuss their, their um, apprenticeship offers. There's the big assembly. You can go on to the big, uh, the big assembly that is produced every single year. That's on YouTube. There's loads and loads of information out there for you. So this is definitely the week to actually find out all the information that you need. Um, so I will begin, hopefully. There we go. Higher and degree apprenticeships. That's what we're actually going to discuss tonight. Um, this is mainly focused because your young people are already in college. And this is something that they might be thinking about um, as an alternative to going to university or might be something that they actually discover in the next number of years. So I'll explain what an apprenticeship is. An apprenticeship is an alternative to a full time job to anybody over the age of 16. So this is available to um, you if you have left school. There is no age um, upper limit to it, though. So this actually this pathway can be used for you if you are leaving school, if you're leaving college or leaving university and want to move into your career. It's also available to you if you would like to upskill in the future, if you would like to do some retraining or you want to go for a promotion and you don't have the qualifications, then an apprenticeship is a really fantastic way to actually move forward in your career. Now, there are also a lot of companies out there at the moment that will only take on apprentices. They don't actually offer out um, full time positions to young people. They prefer them to come in as apprentices. And there's many reasons behind that. And I'll explain that as we go through. But what does it actually mean to you? So in essence, it is like finding a full time job. But it is a full time job with a little bit of a twist, um, and that is that you have off the job training. Now, that training will be job related qualifications. So if you have just left school, then you will not have actually uh, covered maybe um, engineering. You may not have covered horticulture. You may not have done a health and social uh, um, qualification at that age. That might be the same if you have gone off to college or sixth form as well. So the courses that you have already chosen may not be the ones relevant to the job that you want to go into or you discover once you actually start looking into this pathway. So all you need to do is find the company you want to go and work for. They choose the actual training pathway for you. It is job related. They already know the school, uh, sorry, the college or the university that you'll be going to. That's already part of it. It's all arranged. So all you need to do is actually discover the employer. You will have to go through the process of applying for this apprenticeship, though, the same way you would any other position. So it will be getting your CVs ready and your application forms. It will be possibly assessments as well. Um, and then going off for your interviews and then keeping your fingers crossed that you actually get the apprenticeship that you really want. The nice thing about apprenticeships, however, is that you can apply for as many as you like. 
alongside university. So do yourself a favour and just do both. Um, your apprenticeship is normally one to six years. If you're looking at the higher end, the higher end degree offers, these tend to be four years plus. So again, don't worry about that. I'll explain as we go through, but having apprentice attached to you doesn't really mean um, that you're held back in any way, I promise you. But it does mean that you are an apprentice for that amount of time and your apprenticeship will be split into two parts. So 80 percent of the time in work and just 20 percent of the time in education. That will all be explained to you as you go through the interview stage. There are different levels of apprenticeship so that are available to you. And in the next slide, I'll explain those. And um, it's a good time to start thinking about which level you think you would cope with better. OK, so you have choices ahead as well. Now, every apprentice gets paid a salary um, and this is um, good for absolutely everybody that's listening this evening. Um, they do vary, though. There is a government baseline and that will what, what, how can I say this gently? There are a lot of companies that do pay the government baseline, which in all honesty isn't um, a huge amount. However, it's a decent wage to start on. But a lot of companies now understand that to be in competition and to get these young people to come and apply for those positions, they're actually quite competitive with full time positions out there and they are in competition with each other as well. So when it comes to the salaries, really have a look around. I do have a slide to go through with you on those as well. And it does come, an apprentice does come with real responsibilities. It isn't just about making the tea and the coffee, although I expect you to kind of, you know, have a go if it is your turn. But are you ready to take on the role and the responsibilities that come with it? Really make sure that you are researching into what that company wants from you. You might find the same job title two or three times, and yet the responsibilities within it might be completely different. Again, companies can ask for what they want. So really make sure that you are finding something that you are comfortable with. Now, everybody gets to sign a contract. You get to sign two, actually. One on your first day. That's to say that you will turn up for your apprenticeship, that you'll also go and get your qualifications on the side and that you will actually combine the two well and uh, put your all into it. At the end of your apprenticeship, you'll be offered a second contract. Once you've finished your apprenticeship, got all of your new qualifications, there will be a position for you within that company. Now, it might be slightly different to the one that you applied for. During an apprenticeship, it's a great time for companies to actually discover your skills that you may not have discovered when you were 16, 17, 18 years old. But during the course of your apprenticeship, there might be different opportunities. Um, they'll be pulling out different qualities from you. So they might actually have a slightly different option for you at the end of your apprenticeship as well. And again, that's a really nice thing about an apprenticeship. It's a learning process for everybody involved. Now, all of that together, it's not the easiest option. It really isn't. It does take some time and effort on your part. And I do hope that if you are thinking about this route, that you do take some time to actually look through what they can actually offer you. The process for you, though, if you are in year 13, really does have to start soon. You will need to start applying for positions before you've even left college. So make sure you're getting ahead of the game and getting all the information that you need. And for any students in year 12, then for you, it is a case of start looking ahead anyway, because it's great to see what's available now. Get in touch with companies, um, see when they're uh, see what they're offering their current apprentices, compare it to when it's your turn, um, but always look ahead and see what's available to you. Now, the level of apprenticeships that are available, we offer everything from a level two through to a level seven. Now, level two and three are for students that just have their GCSE qualifications. Now, that can be, like I said, anybody from 16 plus. Um, and if you are applying for a level two or three, then you will go to a local college and you will come out with the equivalent of GCSEs, A-levels or BTECs. To get on to a level two or three, you will need good maths and English. Normally, level fours and above are preferred if you're looking at the advanced levels. For those students, though, that have stayed on and actually um, taken on um, A-levels already or BTEC courses, then 
the alternative for you instead of choosing university could be an apprenticeship at a higher or degree level. Now then, this means that instead of going off to university full time, you actually go and find your apprenticeship and you will go to university part time instead. I'll explain it in the next slide when it comes up. But if you apply for a foundation level, a bachelor or a master's degree, that is what you will come out with. Um, there is no course written at college or university that is any easier for you just because you're an apprentice. It's exactly the same course that you would choose full time, except you go part time and your company choose it for you. But I promise you the outcomes will be exactly the same. Now then, I'm just going to pop back to a level three here. For some students, even though you have finished college and you may be able to come out with some fabulous results, don't discount a level three apprenticeship. For some of you, you might feel more comfortable going back, or should I say going sideways, and actually redoing a level three, starting on a level three apprenticeship, because it might just suit you a little more. Once you've finished a level three, then you can actually move up to a higher level. Get an understanding of the industry you want to go into, maybe um, get your foot in the door. Maybe you're just not sure that it's the right place for you to be. Then rather than committing to something as large as a degree level apprenticeship, maybe doing a level three apprenticeship first. Completing that and then moving on. It's your choice. So, like I said, although you might have the qualification, don't discount a level three. Some of them are absolutely fantastic. Now then, what's the difference between um, university full time and an apprenticeship? And this is where the parents uh, can actually uh, pay a lot of interest in here. For me, this was a great information uh, when my children started to um, choose their options. So the learning, like I said, is still that 80-20 split. So you will still be at work for 80% of your time and 20% of your time will be in the learning uh, side of it. Now then, it's a little bit different to college, which is normally four days at uh, work and one day at college. When it comes to university time, you might find that you go in um, blocks at a time. So it might be a week, it might be a month. We have even heard from st some students that they do three or four months at a university and then they spend the rest of their time at work. It depends on your company and what they have set up with the, the university that is actually delivering the training side of this. The salaries are a little bit higher once you begin um, a higher or degree level apprenticeship. You're a little bit older, there aren't as many safeguarding issues, and they expect you to take on a little bit more responsibility now that you're a little bit older as well. So the salaries will reflect that. But for me, this is the big, the big one. As a parent um, who has already had one of her children go off to university, if you choose an apprenticeship, it's completely free. So for all the grown ups that are listening, you have now got that extra money in your back pocket that you thought you were going to have to pay for your uh, young person's um, education, new car, a holiday, get the spare bedroom kitted out, whatever you need to do. There you go. Um, the company actually pay for your university degree and you don't have to pay them back at the end of your apprenticeship either. They'll also cover things like your um, accommodation fees while you're away at uni. They'll also cover any travel costs. They'll also pay for any exams, um, any equipment you need. That is all covered as part of your apprenticeship. Now, let me just go back one there and you're still getting paid while you're at uni as well. OK, so that is the difference between the two. Um, full time university, it's full time learning. You don't get paid and it's going to cost you. Now then, you are still treated like a, um, a student. There is actually an apprentice student union card, which means that you can use it to get money off absolutely everything, all of your Ubers and your food deliveries and everything else that goes with it. Um, but spend it on books as well. OK, they are important. The experience, though, that you get at any level of apprenticeship, OK, any level, whether it's a level two or a level six, seven, is invaluable, not just to you, but to your company that you're working for and to future employers as well. Remember, you started your apprenticeship three years before somebody that has just finished um, university. OK, so that is three years worth of experience that you have 
full time university doesn't always come with three years worth of work experience attached to it. There might be some work placement, but this is something that will really help you in the start of your career. And this is why apprenticeships are becoming more and more popular, because companies really like the fact that you have the experience and that they've taken you and molded you into the person they're hoping you're going to become. Now, going back to this, having an apprentice attached to your job title for a little bit longer than somebody that's just come out of university. The only reason that you have apprentice there means that you are still in education, but you are still three years up the career ladder. If you finish university, you have to go back to the bottom and then play catch up. OK, so just have a look around at the options. It's your choice. Like I said, I had one child go to university. My eldest one actually did an apprenticeship. OK, um, and he did fantastically well on his, has actually moved up a level as well. Um, and 11 years later, he's doing very, very well. My second one, he, she chose university did well out of it, got what she needed um, and is moving on in her career. I still have one, though, that's in year 12 at the moment. Um, he's still figuring out life, so we're not quite sure which direction he'll be going in. But there are options. There are options for, for you all. So have a look and see which one suits you the most. You can actually do an apprenticeship after university. So if you do a foundation degree at university and then move into an apprenticeship that offers you a bachelor or a master's degree, why not? The choices are yours. So how is it delivered? Like I said, you will go off to university for some of your time, but there are companies out there that even have workplace learning. So you will actually be trained and educated by people within your industry, which is really, really great way to pass down knowledge to you. Um, there are some um, huge engineering companies that have their own schools built on site if you're lucky enough to get one of those. However, whether you go to college, whether you go to university uh, for your education uh, as an apprentice, some of it will be online. Number one, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Fingers crossed it never comes back to get us again. But during school holidays, which you don't get as an apprentice, during summer breaks and Christmas breaks, your tutors still need to be in touch with you. And they do that through online learning. OK, so just be prepared for that as well. Um, and the next big question is, what do you want to be when you grow up? There are just so many choices. There are certain industries, though, that you can only apply to if you are older. So apprenticeships aren't for everybody across the board. Um, and a lot of these particular um, industries all come with very, very strict guidelines about the qualifications that you need, what they're expecting from you. So really make sure that when you're looking through, you are really matching yourself to the right company, the right industry, things that don't just suit your um, qualifications, but also your personality as well. But look around industries and sectors rather than job titles. And the reason I say that is because there's hundreds of job titles um, and some you will never have heard of, but might suit you perfectly. So always look around the industry or the sector first. Who offers out apprenticeships? I'm happy to say that all of these do. Um, and they did most of them during lockdown as well. They didn't um, they didn't get rid of too many, uh, you know, during that time. They kept a lot of their apprentices on, even if they were working remotely. Um, a lot of the large companies were very, very good at uh, keeping hold of their young apprentices. However, these aren't the only companies that actually offer out apprenticeships. There are hundreds of companies in your local town, your local high street that actually offer out apprenticeships. And this goes back again to what type of person are you? If you feel that working for a huge international company suits you perfectly, apply for them. If you're the type of person that feels that working for a slightly smaller company would suit you better, apply for those. It is a real personality match here. And just popping back to my eldest one, he was a bit of a grumpy baby, grumpy teenager, kind of a grumpy adult. Um, but he applied for a company that employed 10 people. OK, suited him perfectly. Um, that was it every day. Getting up for work for him to deal with as few people as possible was the perfect start. My daughter, however, she she's a bit like me. Um, she's quite uh, she's very good with people. She likes to be around. She likes to talk to people. She works for a company that's a little bit bigger. This is what she does for a job. She talks to people um, every single day. That's what 
suits her personality. You really do have to understand yourself and match yourself really, really well. But if you look at, um, let's go for Rolls Royce, and we compare them to um, Mike's Mechanics in your local high street, what's the difference between the two? Well, again, it's just the environment. Mike's Mechanic employs 15 people, Rolls Royce employ 15,000 people um, every single day at their local branch. Where do you fit in? The education, though, is exactly the same. So if you were um, a mechanical engineer for Rolls Royce or a mechanical engineer for Mike's Mechanics, you would more than likely be on the same course. That's who you that's who you will do your training with. Lots and lots of other apprentices just in different industries to you, some international, some smaller. So again, have a look around. And also, and this is a really, really. This point for me is. Um, one thing that comes up all of the time with students especially is that you really do need to think outside of the lines a little bit with apprenticeships um, it is a little bit of sort of like search and research search and research keep clicking on your google search it's okay so you've got a hundred tabs open because once you start looking through you'll find oh where does that go where does that go um, if you start as an apprentice in say customer services and you complete that one and you want to upscale you want to upscale at a later date you could move into marketing or business development companies will allow you to actually move through their levels the nhs are very good at that um, the armed forces are very good the west midlands police are very good and a lot of engineering companies are really good at that as well and again it helps you kind of like move on in your career However, I have a lot of students that come to me and say, I really want to move into um, finance, but I don't know if I want to work for a high street bank. Where do I look? Well, have a look at your interests. What is it that you kind of get excited about? Is it sport? Is it um, is it social social media? Is it community work? Whatever it might be, then look into that as an industry and have a look around at where your skill sets actually fit into that sector. I had one young man at year 13 who has just done finance uh, during his whole two years at uh, sixth form. That is the industry he wants to move into. He did three weeks work experience at a local accountant. And when I met him randomly at a careers fair, he actually said to me, it's actually not as exciting as I thought it was going to be it's a bit like Groundhog Day and I did say well you're only on work experience maybe they just kind of gave you just a few simple tasks while you were there and he said no it's just it just didn't feel very comfortable at all so we know that that's his skill set we know that's what he wants to do he actually goes to a sports college and his big sport is rugby so I said hold on a second have you not looked at rugby as an industry to move into, and he hadn't at all. So five minutes of his time on his phone, we literally looked up, looked up uh, the RFU, we looked up his local uh, rugby team and the, um, the nearest um, league team as well. And two of them had apprenticeships in different sectors, but two of them had uh, an apprenticeship in finance, in their financial department, and he applied for them both straight away. I'm happy to say he got interviews for both. Um, I still haven't been in touch with him yet to see how they went, but I will do. Um, but it took about 10 minutes, but it took two seconds to think outside the box and actually make that link. That's down to you to do that, okay? That's me just having a chat with one student. If I could kind of like sign right that, I would. Look at what you're interested in and where where can that take you? OK, that's where you need to start the research. So I've brought up, um, I obviously know where your college is, and I've brought up this. These are live. So these are level fours and level six apprenticeships. And the reason I went for these ones was because I wanted to show you um, a real diverse um, uh, different offers when it comes to the actual um, financial side of this. Now, I found the lowest paid um, apprenticeship at level four that I could find today. These are live today. So if you go online today, you'll see them. Um, £8,236 is the lowest one at level four. Um, 
so this was for a sports coach and they wanted you to have completed um, a BTEC level of um, of sports learning. That was all they needed from you. Maths and English on the side, obviously. That was all they were looking for. The experiences that they were giving you, though, however, were vast. But also when I looked online to see where this particular company took you, they actually promoted you every single year. This was a three year apprenticeship and every year they gave you a two and a half thousand pound pay rise every year. There was also bonuses attached to this one. So uh, depending on the extra training that you did and the extra skills that you learned, coaching skills and qualifications that you learned during uh, this apprenticeship, you would get bonuses on top of that as well. So although this was their base rate, there was definitely, definitely room for improvement during your three years as an apprentice. And as you can see, they vary. It's down to you to decide how much you think um, it is worth um, your time and your effort applying for these companies. I will say, however, at the age of 18, do you have a mortgage? Do you own your own car? Are you getting are you paying for your own tax, MOT and petrol to get you everywhere? Um, the three biggest costs that we have are our homes, our cars and our children. OK, they they are our biggest costs. What is your money going on if you're um, on an apprenticeship wage? And if you break it down weekly, it's actually quite a nice livable wage. I will say, however, when you first look at them, please remember these are your first day unqualified wages. You don't actually know how to do the job yet. So the wages do reflect that a little bit. One tip I will give you, however, is when you actually look through the apprenticeship offers, have a look at the very bottom of the advert and it will tell you your new job title um, that you're actually aiming towards. Go back to GOV dot jobs and type in that job title just to see what uh, your um, wages could become at the end of your apprenticeship. They don't tell you that on the advert, by the way. That is the one thing you will not know is how much your wages will be at the end of your apprenticeship. Again, that takes one of those extra searches for you. OK, but definitely worth a little bit of time looking into. So how do you find them? Please feel free to um, screenshot this or get your camera out now to um, use the QR code that is online. The find an apprenticeship one is the gov.uk um, apprenticeship website. Um, I do work on their behalf, so they are actually a really, really good website. It's updated every single day and there are many, many, many different op opportunities on there. But also within the advert itself, there's so much information, more information than you'll find anywhere else. There's um, skills and qualifications. There are um, your your um, outline of the job, a link to the company that's offering the position as well. Um, and like I said, even the training is outlined on there. So really do sit down and have a look through this website. You can even set up an account on there, which is definitely worth doing. So every time an apprenticeship is actually released in your industry, it will actually be emailed to you. A great way to keep ahead of the game. UCAS do have some apprenticeships on, on their own site as well. So again, if you're looking through to apply for um, university, just have a look at what apprenticeships they're offering at the moment as well. Um, and remember, you can apply for both, so please do. Um, employer websites, they are invaluable. Some companies advertise once on the government website, but when you have a look, there's 20 more uh, on their own website. So make sure you're actually looking through them carefully. Employer websites are really important to you if um, you are actually going through an interview process as well. Really do the background research on any company that you apply for. They'll probably ask you a question or two about them anyway. Um, so it is always worth doing that, that little bit of a check. Also, employer websites can also give you an email contact within that company. So it is worth thinking ahead. So if you've got any year 12 students online at the moment, um, it's a great way for you to connect and maybe sort out some work experience or do some internship over the summer. So again, think ahead. There is even the higher and degree um, listings. Now then, this is updated, not on a weekly basis though, um, more on a sort of two weeks to four weeks, they will update um, this higher and degree listing. 
Um, and all it will give you is some of the companies that are advertising at the moment. But again, it might refer you back to um, the government website, but a great place to start looking. Now then, a couple of years ago, I never thought I would be able to say that you could do a degree as a, an apprentice degree as a doctor. Um, now you can. It's a little bit frightening for me to say that, but yes, you can. Um, I'm not quite sure how it works yet. We've we haven't actually seen one, but they are available in level seven. And the reason I don't mention them much at the beginning of this is because level sevens are normally offered to people that are already within um, their career. They've already started it and I've already um, finished certain degrees along the way. So this is a way to upskill. Um, so, no, you can't just go in at a level seven to be a doctor. You would have to have certain qualifications beforehand. However, within the um, the armed forces, there are also a lot of those higher six and sevens available to you. So, again, this the Institute of Apprenticeships is one place to go um, for those slightly more unusual um, apprenticeship offers. And a great place just again to just start comparing, seeing if you're able to cope with those apprenticeships that are actually being offered. One thing I will say as well, though, is please try and speak to apprentices or download videos uh, uh, from apprentices. There's loads of places you can go for those as well. The um, the government website does have them. Um, also, amazing apprenticeships do. And actually, yesterday, uh, the Big Assembly, uh, if you uh, go onto YouTube and download The Big Assembly, there are loads of videos on there as well. And we had three fantastic young people, one from JCB, who we work with quite a lot, um, a young lady from KPMG, the um, financial uh, company. And again, we work with her very closely and um, a newly qualified uh, young apprentice, um, the uh, a young man who works with HGVs as a mechanic. Um, really interesting story from him as well. So there are lots of places for you to go. And it's OK for me to talk to you uh, for this long um, and you know talk at you almost. But if you have the chance to actually speak to somebody about this that's actually gone through it themselves, you'll get much more insights from them. So please, if you can, again, carry on those little searches and find somebody uh, that's actually done something, especially if it's in your industry. Um, they'll tell you things that I've completely missed. I'll also say as well that as you are at home, um, speak to your grown ups at home and grown ups speak to your uh, family and friends as well. If you know somebody that works for a company that offers out apprenticeships, then it's OK to get an apprenticeship through somebody, you know. OK, um, if you can make those, it might not be for you. It might be for one of your friends. Do the introductions. OK, it's OK to do that. Um, so as so long as there is an apprenticeship and the educational side there, um, then just have, have a question, you know, have a, um, a conversation about it. You'd be amazed at how many people within your family work for companies that offer out apprenticeships. They are becoming more and more popular. So again, I know it's tricky for some teenagers, but go and have conversations with the grown ups that you live with. Um, I do love apprenticeships. It is National Apprenticeship Week. Um, I actually think that they are a great opportunity for anybody. Uh, in all fairness, it doesn't matter how old you are. Um, it is worth looking through the options. It is worth taking some time out to really sit down and research this. That's all it is. It's an option. It is instead of college, instead of university, after university, as an upskilling um, process. It's there for a long time. They will be changing over time as well. They're getting better. They've got better since I've started doing this job. So as a young person now going through this process, absolutely wonderful opportunities for you. Really do take the time just to make sure that you are choosing the right option for yourselves, OK, and have the conversations with your grown ups, with your tutors at school and people like myself who are always available. And um, there's lots and lots of places that you can get the information, but don't leave yourself with nothing. Apply for these and apply for university and apply for full time jobs and then just make your mind up. You'll know which one feels more comfortable to you. Um, but for now, I'm going to stop talking. Um, if you have any questions, please pop them into the chat box and hopefully I'll be able to answer them for you. So I'll just stop sharing my screen now. 
hopefully this will work. Thank you very much indeed, Donna. That's absolutely super. A real flow um, and and very, very interesting and detailed. But also, I think some of those uh, personal experiences, meeting students, meeting people, uh, young people who've actually applied for them and gone through the process uh, is, is a really good touchstone for our students and for parents as well. Um, whilst we're waiting for any uh, conversation in the chat, there were a couple of questions beforehand. So if I could ask you those and then we'll, we'll continue with, with the live chat. Um, can, can I ask, how can I best prepare, a student asked, for getting into a degree apprenticeship without particularly having had valuable work experience? Because obviously COVID has provided a real challenge for young people, perhaps at the moment in year 12 and 13. Could you see if you could address that, how they might best prepare? When it comes to work experience, employers are very aware of the fact that COVID happened and that for a lot of students that work experience was really, really tricky, whether it was provided for by their schools, their colleges or something that they found themselves. So they are very aware of that. So there isn't that much pressure to actually have work experience as such within a work setting. Um, if you have a part time job, Fabulous. You know, obviously that is your work experience. However, one thing that we've really kind of um, pointed students in the direction of, especially since COVID is things that you do every day give you work experience. Do you help out at home? Um, do you take care of anybody at home, a family member or a neighbour? What did you do during COVID? So think about the experiences that you do every day and how can they translate into skills? Not necessarily as in I go to work at nine o'clock on a Saturday and I do a shift for six hours. Remember, things that you do every day give you experiences. It's how you actually reword them um, when it comes to those application forms. And one thing I always suggest is it doesn't matter what skills a company is, is asking for. They can ask for maybe eight, ten things on there. If you're ticking five of those, it's a good match for you. If you're only ticking one or two, it's probably not the best match. Nobody expects you to match all of them. So what you need to do is pick out the ones that actually you, you, you feel more comfortable with and write them down, write down three or four sentences to explain each one of those skills and qualities. Use an experience that you've had at school or college, an experience at home, and then use something that you do outside as well. So if you're social media mad, um, then that gives you digital skills. Have you done anything online that you could actually uh, add the link to on, on your um, on your application form? If you are very much into and if you want to move into engineering, digital marketing, anything that an architect is a really, really good one. Anything that requires you to have drawings or done projects, take small photographs of those and set yourself up a little Instagram link. We don't want to know what you did with all your friends at the weekend, just those little projects and then add that link to your um, application form. It means employers can instantly see a little bit about you. It describes what you're doing. Your work experience is almost, well, actually, I sit um, at home and I design buildings or cars or I can. I mean, I had one young uh, lady who um, was going into um, she wanted to go into project management. And she actually photographed things that she'd done around school. Um, she organised a charity day. There was loads of photographs that she'd taken. She took the best ones, added them to her Instagram account and used that link. It shows people she didn't go out to work. She actually did it in school. So but it shows people what she can do, what she's capable of. So use your experiences that are around you every day and just reword them slightly. That's the best way to do it. That's excellent. Thank you, Donna. And actually, um, we'd encourage all students who are looking at apprenticeships or um, that route or, or an alternative to university to join our pathway, which we have as an alternative to uni. Um, we've been putting on work experience workshops as we're uh, anticipating that all students will get some experiences of the workplace and thinking outside the box in order to gain some skills and to recognise some of those everyday 
play skills that you're talking about as being very much a partnership when they start looking at applications. So that's really helpful. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, obviously, we talked about you talked about the, the levels of apprenticeships. And um, I think one of the things that I picked up in a, a, another talk earlier this week was how a lot of the employers actually prefer students. It's not just their own choice, but a lot of employers are actually expecting students to start potentially at level three to move on through and progress. We know that accounting, if you're doing AAT, et cetera. Um, and I think it's about um, really understanding that those levels of apprenticeships are not, you're not um, uh, going to be thought any worse off if you go to a level three uh, and work your way up. That is actually expected within some of these uh, particular industries. Um, and uh, one of the questions was what grades are required for the various levels of apprenticeships. But I think probably that's where your explanation was at. Yeah, I think when it comes to when it comes to level three, if I can just go over something there for you, a level, some some companies will take you at a level three. So say they employed 10 apprentices, um, they put everybody onto a level three and then they see how you cope on a level three because it is very different to school or college so they they help you understand what it's like to actually be in that world um, and you might be learning new languages around that whether it's engineering whether it's financial it doesn't matter the industry it will be something that you've never done before and then they will help you then move up to maybe a level four or they might move you up to a level five or even a level six depending on how they feel you're coping and that's a really nice way for that company to actually nurture you through your apprenticeship. It doesn't mean you're an apprentice for any longer. It just means that one extra year on a level three to see how you can cope. Now, when it comes to your qualifications, every company can ask for anything they want. So make sure that you're matching yourself to the right companies. Um, when it comes to the higher level end of apprenticeships, they are quite restrict. So you can apply with your predicted grades. However, and go through the interviews all, all beforehand. Once your results come in, it is very important that you let them know if you don't quite get a grade, speak to the company anyway. Don't just think that's it. I can't I can't speak to them ever again. If you give them a call and you were a good candidate um, and they did like you, then maybe it might be worth asking them if you could still be on their apprenticeship programme, but maybe do a retake. Or could it be that you move down a level and then you build your way up through the company? So don't just think if you don't get your grades um, at the end of your, your time at college that that's it. You, you can't apply. Some companies will say, no, we're very, very sorry. We need you to have this. Then it might be a case of you doing the retakes and applying the following year. Um, that is entirely up to you. But again, just look at the different levels that are available and make sure that you're comfortable with the ones that you're, you're actually applying for. Because remember, you are doing education as well as working. Although you'll get given the time to go off to get your education, you are still you still have to do both. So make sure you take something that you can cope with as well moving forward. That's really helpful. Thank you. Um, can I ask how parents can perhaps best support students through the process? Because obviously this is an opportunity for parents uh, perhaps to learn a, a little bit more about the frameworks, etc. But when, when the camera's gone and they're left to, to their own devices, can you give uh, them some pointers as to perhaps where they can best support the students? Yeah, sure. Well, as a mum who's already been through this process, um, I will say that if you go on to gov.uk apprenticeships, there is actually a parent pack that you can sign up for. Now, the parent pack is monthly, so and it's completely free. And all you need to do is uh, leave a few details with them and they send you um, some really great information of how you can support your young person, some updates to apprenticeships as well, which are happening all of the time. And one thing I learned, especially with my eldest two, was I always did a 
I get it as a parent, we worry. They're about to leave home. Are they being looked after? Are they there just to make the tea and coffee? Is somebody actually taking care of them? I get all of that. So what I did was I actually went online, um, did some research myself as well, um, found a few apprenticeships that I thought might match my, my son and my daughter when they were looking and just kind of like gently spoke about it over the breakfast table, you know, oh, have you seen this? Little bit of encouragement here and there. But in the background, I would look at the skills and qualities that companies would look for. And I'd actually sit down at tea time and go over those with uh, my son and my daughter. So if I'd ask them to give me examples to prove their communication skills. So what did you do today? So what skills and qualities did you pick up today? How can we connect that to your application forms? It's about taking the time with them, but encouraging them to notice that as well. And don't do it for them, no, please. OK, remember, your young person has to fill out their own CV and their own application form because they're the person that has to sit there interview. Yeah. Um, we actually can't do that. How much we want to, we cannot do that for them. And remember, it will be their first day of work. I would say do a little bit of encouragement in the background. Um, take notes yourselves of like, you know, start dates, uh, end dates of when the applications have got to be in, just in case you need to be give that little bit of a nudge um, but just as a parent sit back let them let them do what they need to do get the ice cream ready just in case uh, they come back from an interview and it didn't go so well um, but just keep encouraging them like I said the parent packs are brilliant though and you can access any information online that you want to on that GOV site um, there's loads and loads of information for parents as well on amazing apprenticeships that's another good place to go to that's lovely thank you and actually all of these um faith's been putting links in the uh, the chat function but our um website the ke careers section of the website has a lot of these uh signposted as well and a lot of information for both parents and students um our alternatives to university um pathway is particularly useful i think for students who are considering apprenticeships even if as you say they're looking at a dual route uh, or employment and I think that's really helpful. Um, we have also got in April from King Edward's point of view we've got two sessions on the application and assessment process for apprenticeships um, which are uh, through WorkPay through yourselves in common time and we'll be releasing the dates of those and I think that's um, for year 13s particularly will be very useful but for prep for year 12s as you rightly say as well. Um, the importance of work experience, we can't stress enough to think outside the box, as you said, but also to gain those experiences of the workplace. Um, and we have put lots of information on the website and on the Padlet and on the pathways uh, that we have online uh, to try and encourage students to start thinking about those soft skills as well as those sort of more um, obvious skills. Um, but the communication skills, the things that you've spoken about are very, very important to think about resilience and some of those that um, perhaps students don't think of quite so much, but parents may think that's a little bit outside the box. I will say I've actually I'm actually in touch with a student at your college at the moment and um, she wants to move into a particular industry uh, working with um, special educational needs students and she's taken up um, a BSL course um, which is free you can you can learn basic sign language online um, going go, talking about the um, the extras especially for parents and students as well anything that you can do online like a free course that can help upskill you in just a completely random way even if you don't want to go into that industry why not learn a second language sign language is a second language um, and it would be really useful in a workplace and that could be a skill that nobody else going for an interview that day would have but there is also volunteering. Now, this isn't just in your local charity shop, which is wonderful, but you could actually volunteer at a local hospital. You could volunteer at the St John's. You could volunteer at your local football ground. Um, it doesn't matter what you want to do as a career. If you can volunteer somewhere in your community, that is work experience that you can actually add. And I'm actually just going to add onto your um, 
chat function if I can. I've actually just been handed today um, a, uh, a volunteer uh, company that actually help you find volunteering positions um, in the area. So I'll just pop that into uh, the chat Thank as well. You. Thank you. That would be very helpful. And I think all of these things we've encouraged students to uh, look at Unifrog, which we have as a as a, an application. So um, students can start to look for uh, job roles, do the quizzes. Um, there's lots of information, as I say, online about those. Um, but it's very helpful thinking about volunteering and the kind of skills that that gives you, as you say, in the broadest sense of volunteering, not just um, perhaps as uh, students may, may automatically think. That's really helpful. Thank you very much indeed for that, Donna. Um, and um, we have as well an employer and apprenticeship event at King Edwards on the evening of 16th of March that will be open to parents and students. Um, I think um, either yourself or one of your representatives will be there again, I think, at that. Um, but we would encourage students and parents to come along on the 16th of March. There'll be far more information coming out about that soon as a good exploration to come to talk uh, to employers about what they're looking for, what kind of job roles they have, and where you can start to see those matches and ask questions of uh, employers and also hopefully some apprentices that will be there on that evening as well. Um, Faye's been putting things in the uh, chat function and one of those is to ask that uh, anybody who has any questions they haven't asked this evening to email um, ourselves at careers at keds.ac.uk and myself, Faye and the team will be very happy to pass those on to uh, Donna or answer if there are indeed uh, for KE careers. Um, we'll also be offering, of course, one to one appointments for any students who would like to have those. Um, we have a fairly comprehensive coverage of, of diaries for those, but we can always try and fit uh, somebody in. So uh, please do email if you'd like a one to one as well. And parents, if you have any inquiries, please do email the careers at um, email address as well. Um, Donna, we haven't got any further questions, but I would very much like to thank you for the very free flow of information that you've given us great advice. Um, I hope students and parents have got a lot out of that. There's a lot to think about. Donna, thank you very much indeed on behalf of all of us and thank you to students and parents for joining us on one of these talks. We have many of them that we advertise through parent mail newsletters and our general newsletter and also on our website. So we look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. And Donna, in the meanwhile, thank you very much indeed. Mm -hmm.